there's an old expression in life that says you get what you pay for. You know, you buy cheap, you get cheap. Oh, sure, there's sometimes deals to be made, but for the most part, you know what I'm saying, is that you get what you pay for. You reap what you sow. There's the idea that you invest what you divest. In other words, whatever you take in is what you give out. And unless you put something in, you can't get anything out. And that's kind of why we tell you to read the Bible daily, because unless you got something in there, there's nothing to come out of there except for you. And believe me, if you're like me, you don't want you coming out all over, because I don't know, sometimes the you that you think you are isn't the you that we see who you are, so that's not the you that we want to deal with. We'd rather deal with God in you. And that's kind of what the devotionals say today. It's like, you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. As long as you're living in this life, as long as you exist as a human being, as long as you have, as it were, faith in God and become a born-again Christian, and you're walking through life until the day he takes you home, you're building and investing in a permanent structure. That's your soul. You're causing, sometimes, problems for yourself that you don't need to deal with. Like, hey, you know, you can watch anything you want to, but Jesus said if you're watching things that are bad for you, quit watching them. That goes without saying. If you're drinking things that are bad for you, quit drinking them. Well, that goes without saying. If you're doing things that are just stupid, quit doing them, stupid. Well, that goes without saying. But it really doesn't go without saying, does it? Because more often than not, if you're like me, you keep doing the same things over again. And over again, and over again, and over again. God wants to take you out of that repetitious cycle. He wants you to choose today to walk with him in a simpler way. He wants you to ask him, let him, and abide with him, meaning that you live with him daily. That's why in video today we try to talk about what are you doing today? What are you changing today in your life? Why don't you stop listening to everything going on around you and start listening to what God is saying to you? Start focusing in and zeroing in on what's important what will build your faith rather than what will tear it down. Because a lot of people that go to Bible schools or theology or they get into debates and argumentation, I don't know about you, but you know, I look at them and I say, you know, they sound wise, but they don't seem like they know what they're talking about. You know, they don't have much faith. They got a lot of argument, but not much faith. You know, and no offense, but when the rubber beats the road, I'd rather have more faith than have more intellect you know, and intelligence, because my faith is what gives me that assurance that when I'm facing the storms of life and it's dark outside and I can't see the light, I want some faith. <laughs> I don't want some intelligence. I'd rather have intellect take a back seat and my faith take the front seat. So that way I would walk with God. And so today, as you look to God, to follow him in your way. Listen to what he would say to us as we walk in his way. You are building up an unshakable faith. Be furnishing the quiet places of your souls now. Fill them with all that is harmonious and good, beautiful and enduring. Home build in the spirit now and the waiting time will be well spent. Often. When you see a storm hit, it's better to go inside and wait on the Lord than it is to go outside and to just fight the storms. It's not always a good idea. You kind of wait it out until the time that God says, go out. And when God says, go out, then he gives you everything you need to be out there on your own or doing whatever it is that he sent you to do. But when he wants you to be inside and not outside, then maybe sometimes it's time to take your spiritual, you know, kind of like home checklist and see, hey, let me make sure that, you know, I got everything in order here. Because after all, you know, something may happen and I may not have my, my spiritual house in order. You know, kind of like rapture, kind of like disaster, 
kind of like loss of a job, loss of a loved one, you know, those things that you don't really think about much ahead of time, but happen to you anyways. So, when you take a spiritual checklist, what does that mean in real life today? Well, it means that take a place in your home. You know, take a place where you have a prayer closet, some place that you set apart, even if it's just on the mantle, you know, or some picture someplace that you can just look at and you go, oh yeah, because let me ask you this, how many photo albums have you had to sit through when somebody was some showing you all their photos of years gone by, when they were in high school, when they got married, when they had a baby, when they had this, that, and the other thing, and they whoosh, open up the wallet, you know, and there's all the photos falling out, or they send you, you know, like 30,000 forwards on Facebook because, you know, you like to look at pictures. Well, that's kind of what God wants you to do. He wants you to set up little places for Him that He's inspired you with. You know, like, maybe make a little card with a scripture on it, or, I don't know, maybe, you know, and keep it handy. I have mine strung out all over the place. I even have, like, little little tokens that remind me to have hope, that there's always hope, even as the birds hope in His provision and trust in Him. And so, God wants us, at times, to plant in our souls those places that would be special to our relationship with God. You know, like Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, that you could quote to yourself, so that whenever you are doubting, you can trust in Him by remembering Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. What is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6? I don't know. I just know the number. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy path. So, you think on those things, and it causes your mind to focus in on God, as opposed to focus in on what you were doing. Which, to be honest, if you're arguing or watching TV or watching a football game, baseball game, or something else, hey, you get what you pay for, you know? I'm just saying, eternity is coming, and it's knocking at your door. One day you're going to stand in front of God Almighty and give an accounting for the time that you had. I hope your time is well spent, and you prepared yourself for the end of your life as much as you're taking the time right now to spend your life the way you choose to spend it. Because right now is your investment. And what you do with your life is up to you. And you get to choose wisely which way you'll use it and for whose benefit. If you choose to live for yourself, you'll probably die by yourself in hell. If you choose to give it to the Lord our God and to let Jesus live inside you and to abide with you, and you begin to get your house in order, he may use you in some special talent you have, either singing or preaching or teaching or sharing or technical details or some support ministry. But either way, one thing he will use you in always, and that is to have a personal testimony of knowing him intimately in a real way. So today you need to take stock of that. You need to say, hey, you know, maybe I need to talk to this Jesus character and see if he's real. He is. And you need to find out. Or maybe I need to, you know, like kind of find out if I need a devotional. You know, maybe I should go check out some of the ones that that, that guy out in that video keeps talking about. You know, like Daily Light or God Calling or Spurgeon or, you know, Tozer. Or when you prefer. But the point is, today, if you hear his voice, heart not your heart, as it says in the provocation, today would be the time to take the time before it's too late and the storms crash in on you to take stock of where you're at in your walk with the Lord. Where are you as a being a, a foundation on Jesus Christ and knowing him as a personal intimate Lord and Savior that even if he take your life away, you'll still have salvation. That even should the Lord our God decide to allow you the privilege of going through a Job experience, you won't curse him, but you'll bless him. Do you trust God like that? That even if he took everything away, all your props, that you'll still be able to say, I am a Christian. 
I love the Lord my God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's the kind of spiritual stock we want to see if you have. And you should examine yourself to prove to yourself that you're in the faith. Because if you're only in the faith when it's good times, <coughs> let me be the first to tell you, the times they are changing and it's going to get rough. So if you want to get tough, get a devotional. Get someplace alone today. Be still with God and kind of begin to set up like your own little sanctuary so that you could spend time alone with God when you need to be still and not anxious about anything at all, but rather faithful to Him in all your ways.